A state of emergency in Florida. The worst outbreak in years of toxic algae. Green, slimy, smelly, and flat out dangerous invasion. 100% horror. Manatees struggling to move. Thousands of dead fish. Dolphins, sea turtles, even a 26-foot whale shark. Some residents complaining of headaches, respiratory issues, and even rashes. The pungent algae bloom stretches for about 150 miles, growing bigger and lasting longer than years before. It is a crisis that's happening as we speak. So it's important as a scientist, when you see something happening, that's when you need to act. All algae are basically plants. They need three specific things to survive. They need plenty of light, warm temperatures tend to make them grow fast, and they need nutrients, just like any plant, any house plant, any plant you see outside. When they start to grow into these very large nuisance blooms, we have to ask ourselves why. And in most times, we would answer that we've changed the conditions ecologically, which allow them to exploit the conditions and grow. Most of the driving factor for harmful algal blooms relate to nutrients. It is a fertilizer. Just like you fertilize your lawn, if you fertilize the ocean, certain plants are gonna grow better. Unfortunately, these algae, which are, you know, tend to be harmful, are, are the ones that grow better, and they can take over a system. So even though they're naturally occurring, we're contributing to the damage they do. I love the earth. Um, you know, I, I really hate to see it changed. I mean, I've been in South Florida all my life, and um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't swim in Lake Okeechobee anymore. I don't swim in the intercoastal anymore. In fact, I very rarely even think about going in the ocean here anymore. And um, but uh, you know, it's it's somebody's got to look at it, and and you know, I'm just glad that I can do a little. How deep do you want the water sample? Down uh, near the bottom, I assume? Take, take, a, take one uh, about a half a meter and then uh, one just above the bottom. The unknowns in these blooms is we've got a pretty good handle on, yes, it's nutrients. We need nutrients. But what actually, when, when there is plenty of nutrients and there's no bloom, why not? What kicks that bloom on? What actually starts it? Okay, so is, is it iron? Uh, is it some other little factor that we don't know yet? Copper, zinc, there's a lot of so-called cofactors for enzymes, okay. But what is the actual trigger, okay? Because there's been times where it's been calm and hot and you test the water and there's nutrients and there's no bloom. The nutrient sources that can drive these blooms are really varied, so it's hard to pinpoint what is the biggest offender. You know, is it agricultural? Is it septic systems that are not controlled well? Is it uh, people fertilizing their lawns and run off from their grass fertilizer? Is it golf courses? Who knows? There are many inputs of nutrients around the state of Florida. Trying to figure that out is one of the biggest puzzles that scientists have to do. The biggest thing that the public can do to help, help us out in understanding harmful algal blooms are to contact their state and federal representatives to push action, to make sure that legislation and any bills we can get through to help us get the funding and the resources we need to do this work are supported. We need as much support as we can get. Science is expensive. This algae that's the current problem that we want to study in Lake Okeechobee occurs all over the world. It's a big problem in Lake Erie and has been for many, many years. Any techniques we develop here can easily be used in these other areas. We like to have our waterways and our oceans be clean and be able to enjoy them. And if we don't do something, we're gonna lose it. 